Hey guys, it's Tessa. Welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I'd give you guys an update about what's going on, what's been happening. A very dramatic couple of months, shall I say. To start off with, I'm back in the UK. I've moved house twice since I last saw you and it's been crazy. So I wanted to kind of share with you the story about what happened. So I came back over around about the beginning of December. I wanted to find somewhere to live for me and my partner to have a nice home. You know that sort of thing <laughs> that you were dreaming towards and you really want it so badly and you think you found it. Straight away, that wasn't, that wasn't the case. That really wasn't the case. I ended up being in hospital three times within a month and a half. That is crazy. When that happens, you really feel like you've taken your health for granted. And the fact that I had to go in hospital like three times within such a short period of time, it's just really scary. It's really scary. I would never wish that on anybody. So it all started with the estate agent. I wanted to do a house viewing for this really lovely cottage in the middle of nowhere, exactly what we were looking for. Well, I've always wanted to live in the middle of nowhere because secretly, deep down, I'm not exactly a people person. The countryside was the best thing for everything. And I really wanted to be back in the countryside because I love the nature, I love animals, everything like that. And especially after living in a city for like three years, it's so good to have that peace and quiet. The estate agent that viewed the house with us was kind of quite young. He didn't really say anything about the house. So my partner was still back in the Netherlands. He was packing up, getting everything sorted with the flat we were currently living in and I came over to the UK on my own looking for a house so me and my mum went to look at this house together and the estate agent missed out very important bits of information when we went to view the house I fell in love with this house the first one <laughs> the cottage in the middle of nowhere I fell in love with it so good it was awesome it was a two-bedroom house it was lovely it was very secluded considering everything we went through so within a week I managed to move in I was staying at my friend's house within that time because they have to do references and credit checks and things like that for you to move into the house and I was really really stressed out at that time and I was like oh my god what happens if I don't get it what happens if they have a reason and they don't want me to move in and I don't know what was going on and the communication was terrible with this referencing company and the estate agent I ended up ringing the estate agent up because I didn't hear anything for like a week the response was the person that viewed the house with me the first time ended up going on holiday. They didn't tell me that. I didn't know what happened. So someone else was handling this case. And basically it's a good thing that I didn't hear any information about the house because that means it's all going through. And I was like, oh, okay then. So <laughs> after about a week, we had the news that we got the house and I was so happy. I got everything in as soon as I could. We moved in. Within two days of me being in the house, I had an asthma attack. <laughs> not nice it was just before Christmas Eve and I just couldn't breathe properly I was really short of breath and I was like <laughs> it was it was terrible I was really scared and I was on my own because my mum lived in a, like a couple towns away I was waiting for my boyfriend to come over as well with the, all the our stuff because he was sorting it all out and I was just like panicking I didn't know what to do so I ended up going in hospital and that was the first time I spent Christmas on my mum's and then uh, a couple of days later I went home. Hopefully, in my mind, I was like, yeah, I can sort all my stuff out, I can get things looking good for when my partner comes over and it will be like, yeah, look at this, we have a house. Um, no. <laughs> so it come up to New Year's Eve, not long after Christmas. I couldn't breathe. I, I just couldn't breathe. I don't know what happened. I ended up going in hospital again for a second time. Obviously, when they give you certain drugs to help with your breathing, they need to keep you in overnight. So they ended up prescribing me a magnesium through an IV drip, which is meant to help the muscles in your lungs relax for them to open up a little bit more for breathing. And I was like, oh my God, this is scary shit. I don't know what the f is going on. It was scary going through all of that on my own because I really wanted my partner with me. I know my mum came and visited me when I was in hospital, but spending New Year's Eve in hospital, it sucks. It sucks so much. I never want it to happen again. By that time, I kind of knew 
that it was the house doing it. The last time I had asthma this bad was when I was a kid and I was allergic being in a field filled with flowers and it had like random horses and stuff and my eyes went poof, really puffed up and red but it went away. I've never had a reaction like this so bad that my eyes puffed up, they were swollen and red and my breathing was affected to the point where I had an asthma attack. It was terrible. And I thought, okay, that was enough. I was prescribed steroids, I was prescribed antibiotics and I kept, okay, maybe that's the end of that. I can start living my life. Two times in hospital is enough. But oh no, oh no. So my boyfriend comes over from the Netherlands and we were starting to settle in nicely together in this house and <laughs> I had another asthma attack. It was just after my birthday in January and I had another one. So within a month and a half of being in this house, I've had three asthma attacks. I was like, okay, this is the house. It is definitely the house. We can't live here anymore. It's affecting my health. And the stupid thing is, we were tied down to a 12 month contract. <laughs> Not only that, but as so many other things to do with this house kept going wrong. Within the first week of me moving in, the landlord called me up and he said that we were having a new roof put on the house. And I was like, really? Okay, I was never told this. The agent never told me this. So the whole roof had to be stripped off and they wanted to replace all the tiles on the roof. And that took about a week to do, considering they were trying to put the whole house up in scaffolding as well. And then once all that was finished, the boiler decided to stop working. Pretty much explode when it got over a certain pressure. Uh, the boiler man wanted to get a new one because the boiler was about 20 years old and I was like, Shit. I can't do this anymore. When I decided to pack everything up because we were going to look for somewhere else to live because the health problems were just too extreme, this is what I found. It is absolutely disgusting and that is the source of the problem. The whole house was mouldy. It was so damp with condensation that the spores from the mould were in every single room and in every room of the house there was mould. I felt disgusted and I just wanted to get out as soon as possible. That was that. I just couldn't do it anymore. So I managed to find the place I'm in now. Thank the Lord. This place does not have damp and it's actually a little bit cheaper than the other place. So that's good. That's always a good thing. It's just crazy how much can happen in such a small period of time. We've been in this house now for just over a week, about a week and a half. All of the drama that happened with the last house, this cottage, that was going through from December to the end of February and <laughs> I got everything sorted. I tried to get the Wi-Fi sorted so I could make videos again and I got all my products ready like my hair that I was going to make some makeup videos and nail videos and I just couldn't do it because I felt so ill and I didn't want to feel like I was putting on a face for you guys and, and deep down you could tell that there's something wrong because I can't breathe properly and I'm going <laughs> You know, it's just not a good thing. I'm just so happy that we've got a place that I can actually kind of feel like I am healthy again. Settled enough to make videos for you guys and I've missed it so much. So I wanted to update you and let you know that I'm completely fine now. I haven't been in hospital since I've been in this house. Never even want to consider living in a house with damp. That's just super extreme. The funny thing was when I told the landlord that I was put in hospital three times within a month and a half of living there. He basically said in an email that they don't think it's anything to do with the house, but they will let us off and we can give them 30 days notice. So we gave them 30 days notice since I told him that I couldn't live there anymore due to health reasons. He said that he was a reasonable landlord, so he let us off the fact it was a 12 month contract. And the funny thing is, I was in town the next day doing some shopping and I had a phone call from him when I was at the bus stop and he basically said, yeah, we've decided to sell the property so it's gonna be on the market. And I had to hand my keys in to another estate agent, which was really funny because, okay, it's got nothing to do with the property. I didn't get sick for no reason at all. <laughs> and they're selling the house because obviously it's got nothing to do with the house. They couldn't be bothered to replace the boiler. They couldn't be bothered to fix the problem of the insulation, which is causing the damp. It's really frustrating to think that a landlord would do that to put their tenants through hell and say it's nothing to do with the house. Like, if you guys have seen my previous video, my <laughs> neighbor is a psychopath. The landlord didn't want to do anything to make her living 
more comfortable and that seems to be a really popular thing. I don't know why they're like that. If you decide to have a property to sell or rent, you need to make sure it's livable. You can't forget there's a problem. All our furniture was put into our new house, so this one. I wanted to go back and check because you just have to check before you hand the keys in just so you can get the deposit back and everything. So I went back. All of the damp trap catches, I don't know if you know what they are, but it's like a plastic box with little balls of salt inside and it catches all the condensation, all the water, excess water in the air. And I brought like six of those and I put them all around the house. I went back in and the landlord took all of them away. So <laughs> to give the illusion that there's nothing wrong with the house, the house hasn't got damp. So whoever comes to be the property is going to be like, oh yeah, it's lovely. No, do not fall for it. You need to check every nook and cranny. It's a nook and cranny of the house. Look in the corners, look in the, the ceilings, make sure there's no cracks, make sure there's no damp patches of paint. Because in one of the corners of the room, constantly the paint was wet. You wipe your hand on it, paint would come off. It was just terrible. There also wasn't an extractor fan in the bathroom. So all of that wet moisture just went all the way through the house. There was no ventilation at all. Considering it was winter time, it gets super cold having the window open 24 seven. You can't do it. Okay, so I've had a few of you guys ask me about doing an update about what happened to the psychopathic neighbor back in the Netherlands. There is a bit of a crazy story to that one. While my boyfriend was over there packing all of our belongings up to get shipped over back to the UK. When his mum went over to help him because she's got a car so she was helping him clean up the property and everything. When she parked her car outside, now everyone on that street has a designated parking area especially if they live on that road. Everyone's entitled to have their own parking space. Now considering we don't have a car someone else is gonna take our space and all this rubbish but when his mum came over to help him you know just make sure everything's perfect enough for you to get the deposit back and everything she got a parking ticket and she had to pay like 60 euros fine for parking on that street which is crazy because the whole time we lived there for that whole year we never saw a parking warden guy it just never happened so what i think happened was the neighbor from downstairs the crazy psychopathic one he must have called up the i don't know the council or something and got a traffic warden to come out just to give her a ticket because he must have knew that. I can't trust anybody ever again, especially when it comes to moving into a house. I think I've just been messed around so many times that whatever people say, <laughs> I can't believe it. It's just absolutely ridiculous now. The fact that I've moved house since 2015, I've actually moved house five times. I I think I've got some experience with how to handle different situations with looking for a home and things like that, especially abroad. I think the way that they handle the situations, considering the landlord himself wasn't from the Netherlands, he was actually Polish. It just kind of made everything a bit more complicated, considering what well, I must have been a foreigner and he was a foreigner. So you're going to bend the rules, but that's not how it works. You need to treat people with respect and everyone should get treated the same way. I just feel like that's not the case. Some people think they're better than other people. It wears off. You can definitely see that when you're trying to get a house. You just sometimes they feel make you feel like you're not good enough i'm just so glad to be in a place now that i can feel happy and comfortable and be able to make videos again and i miss you guys so so much so i hope this update video was okay i just wanted to let you know everything that happened and also i wanted to get that off my chest a lot has happened where i haven't been able to tell anyone about it so it's good that i can tell you guys get it off my chest and move on and start working on things that I've wanted to do for a long time. So I don't know if you guys noticed, Snapchat is rubbish now. So I did post on my Instagram story that I was making dreadlocks. I will be installing dreadlocks into my undercut, which has grown out quite a lot. It's definitely got a lot longer since it was the last time I showed you. So yesterday I toned some hair extensions in preparation to dye, to make dreadlocks out of them. So I'm going to be bleaching my roots first. I'm gonna wait for them to get a little bit longer and then bleach them. And then I'm gonna be dyeing my hair a new color because I've been blonde for quite a while now and I've actually loved being this blonde. It's quite a hard color to achieve, especially having it this light and not have breakage. But I think it's still really healthy and it's nice and long. So I've been blonde for a while and I want to have a different colour. I've already chosen the colour that I'm going to go. So after I've done my roots with the bleach, I'm 
gonna dye my hair, dye the extensions the same colour, and then make dreadlocks out of these. And I'll make a how to make dreadlock video tutorial as well for you guys. It's been a while since I've made a tutorial on dreads. You guys really like those ones. Remember when I made one? I think it was back in like 2013. So if you guys haven't seen my dreadlock playlist on my YouTube channel, go check it out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for a lot more. And I will see you lovelies very soon. Thanks for watching guys, bye.